Good afternoon, Pebble Harvey family. Today is Wednesday, June the 3rd. This is our Wednesday afternoon Bible study time. You know, this weekend we were able to begin for the first time in 11 weeks, uh, we were able to begin in-person, on-campus worship services. Now, for those of you who aren't ready to come back yet, we fully understand. We hope that you'll listen to the advice of your doctors and you'll be comfortable uh, to come back very soon. We hope to see you soon. But until you get here, we want to keep you in constant update about the good things the Lord's doing for us. So, uh, so a few things happened this weekend. We just kind of want to keep you updated. Uh, watch this clip real quick. Good evening, church family. It is right now Saturday night, about 7 o'clock. We're, uh, we're done with our first service in our new facility. And I need to let you know something exciting that's happened. This is the Miller family. Y'all know them well. This is Creed Miller. Uh, a few weeks ago, Creed called me. Creed's been asking a lot of important questions. And he's been having a lot of good conversations with his parents. And Creed gave his heart to Jesus. And he got saved. And he, uh, he wanted you to know about it. And he wants to get baptized next Sunday morning. So if you're excited about that, uh, just comment below that you're excited. We'd love for him to be able to see that. Well, see you soon. Wasn't that good? Uh, you know, something else happened and it was really exciting. As a matter of fact, it was a it was another first for our building. So, uh, so watch this uh, declaration of somebody knowing Christ as Savior. And this is Aiden Moody. Aiden came to know Jesus right before everything happened with the coronavirus. He was scheduled for the next week to be baptized. And, uh, and, and has waited until today. And we, we so wish, um, you know, he didn't have to wait so long. But listen, we're excited. And today he's making his public profession of faith. Aiden, have you given your heart to Jesus? Aiden, has Jesus washed away your sins? And Aiden, do you commit today in front of your church family that you're going to serve Jesus and honor Jesus all of your life? Aiden, based on your decision to trust in Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, dying to the old ways, raised to walk in the newness of life. Tonight we're going to hear from our associate pastor, Brother Wendell. We love Brother Wendell. He's going to speak to us tonight. So let's pause and let's pray and let's get ready to hear from God's Word tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you for your love for us. We pray that as we open the Scriptures tonight, that you would help us to know something new from the Word, to hear something that maybe we've forgotten, to, to receive something of encouragement, and that, Father, that, that everything that we would read and everything that we would hear would be something that would help us to be more faithful followers of Christ. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, Pell Harvey. Hey, I wanted to share with you today a, a couple of thoughts. You know, alongside one of uh, my property lines, there are some beautiful 10-foot tall azaleas, uh, the Mo Pride of Mobile. They are just gorgeous. Uh, some of my really pride and joy. But there's also a problem. You see, uh, another plant has invaded that area and it's threatening my beautiful shrubbery. Yes, it's kudzu. Kudzu, uh, it started off far away from my property, but little by little, it's come in. It is an ever-invasive vegetation. It is terrible. Um, you know, what, what is this invader of a plant? Well, it was brought here back in the late 1800s from Asia to battle the problem of the Dust Bowl out west. Uh, they brought it in to help uh, stop the erosion of the, the dirt, and, um, and it did a great job. Uh, later on, uh, in the 1930s, the CCC Corps, the Civilian Conservation Corps, brought it to Mississippi for the same reasons. And uh, before long, it quickly got out of hand. We understand that uh, it had a purpose, but again, this all-consuming plant uh, can invade a property and uh, completely leave it devastated. In fact, I've seen this plant completely overtake mature pine trees, killing them. Uh, I've seen it cover acre after acre of cropland that rendered it totally uh, ineffective and, and unproductive. 
I don't know anybody that likes kudzu. I was thinking about that the other day. And you know, I, I have a feeling. I believe that fear, fear is the kudzu of the soul. Fear is the kudzu of the soul. In the fa past few weeks, uh, I've seen an outbreak of a condition that's even more debilitating than the dreaded COVID-19. It's fear. I've seen it in the eyes of some of our people. Uh, mostly it's the fear of the unknown. We just don't know uh, what's going to happen next. And, and I understand that and I appreciate that. Uh, but the temptation is there to let that become an all-consuming uh, condition. Uh, I don't, I have fortunately uh, not met anyone that's actually had uh, the dreaded virus. But I've met many people in the grips of this disease called fear. Uh, and that fear can bring a person to a point of struggling to live the life that God wants us to live. Uh, it, fear can rob a person of the abundant life that Christ offers us and wants us to enjoy. You know, several years ago, uh, I ran across this acrostic uh, for fear. It says, fear, false expectations appearing real, F-E-A-R, false expectations appearing real. For many years, I had a fear of high bridges. Anytime I'd be on the highway and I'd see a high bridge coming at me, I would just, I would just freeze up. I'd, I'd become uh, break out in a cold sweat. Uh, it didn't matter if I saw thousands and thousands of cars and trucks and 18 wheels crossing that bridge day after day. It didn't matter. To me, it was still a tremendous fear. And, and I would just break out in a cold sweat. But I finally figured out that the only way that I could get across that bridge was to keep looking right straight down that middle line and go not look off to the side, not be led astray by what appears. Because you see, the false expectation was that I was going to fall off the bridge. Uh, that was false. That was not going to happen. I didn't regularly run off the road when I was going down the highway. So why would that happen on that bridge? But it was a false expectation planted in my, in my mind. And so I had to overcome that. Fear also seeks to paralyze us from living and producing the fruit of the Spirit that God wants us to produce. Fear can choke out a crop and it can leave us without the love, the joy, and the peace God wants to give us. Fear is a tool of the devil. The devil knows that he is powerless over the children of God. He cannot in any way control us. He cannot in any way defeat us. But if he can infect us with fear, it can render us ineffective and struggling to live and function as the people of God. If he does that, he knows that he has won a small victory. A victory over fear is a defeat of the devil and a clearing out of the kudzu that wants to defeat us. During this season of concern over the virus, I want everyone to stay safe. I want you to follow the recommendations of your medical professionals. And I want us to, together to pray that the highly intelligent and the highly trained researchers that are seeking a vaccine and a test will be successful. I want that more than anything you can imagine. But most of all, I pray that we will not be overwhelmed by this infection of fear. I believe that we can live victorious and courageous lives guided by the Spirit that lives within each child of God. I believe that he will show us how to live a life that is exemplary of the love, the joy, and the peace that we possess through Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul was a man familiar 
with the struggles and the hardships of living the Christian life. I mean, he was stoned, thrown out into the garbage heap for dead. He was beaten. He was shipwrecked, snake bitten, and of course, chained and thrown into the dark Roman dungeons. Yet, in that dark Roman dungeon, he penned these words to the church at Philippi that he had started some years ago. In chapter 4 of Philippians, he says in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to the Lord. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Wow. Paul had an antidote for fear. Paul had the formula we needed. In verse 4 we see he says rejoice. We need to be filled with joy and praise to the Lord. I mean it is uh, so encouraging when I join in the, the singing on Sundays and on Wednesdays with the praise team and, and I hear the, the encouraging words and the notes of uplifting music that we have. Don't deny or don't neglect the rejoicing of our Lord. Secondly, he says, have gentleness. He says, be gentle. Be kind to others who are struggling with this fear. Uh, we have to be patient. And that gentle word turns away wrath. Uh, we need to lift up our weaker brothers. We need to encourage them and show them that God has not forgotten them, that God loves them and wants them to have victory over fear. The third thing he says is we need to pray. Yeah, he says there uh, in verse 6, be not anxious about anything. Prayer is the disinfectant for worry. Let us pray as if we know who it is we're praying to. I hear people pray uh, sometimes and I wonder what kind of weak God are they praying to? Because prayer to God, the God who loved us, the God who created us, the God who knows us even better than we know ourselves, uh, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We need to pray understanding that, hey, God loves us. God wants the best for us no matter what the circumstances around us. Uh, we can bring our prayers and our petition with him. We bring them with thanksgiving because we know that he understands what we need and wants to give us what we need. He loves us more than we could ever understand. And then the fourth thing that Paul says is we need to exhibit peace. We need to show that peace. He says, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We need to let God's peace be our shield and our protection from the worries and the fears of this world. You see, he says he's, that peace will guard our heart. Well, the heart is the center of our emotions. What are our emotions? Emotions are fear. Emotions are happiness. Emotions are uh, suffering. And, and, and so we understand that that peace of God will guard our heart. And it says also it will guard our mind. Our minds are the center of our thoughts. What are our thoughts? Sometimes we let our th thoughts run wild. Sometimes we don't have very much control over our thoughts. But if we let God's peace control our thoughts, then our minds will be under His control. He has a prescription for the disinfecting of our fears, to get rid of our fears. We need to rejoice in the Lord. We need to be gentle and kind in our reactions to those around us. Encourage them to get through this difficult time. We need to also pray. Pray with fervent power. 
to the God who loves us more than we could ever understand. And we need to have peace. Show that peace. Uh, that is the fruit of the Spirit. That is what God wants us to show. Uh, even as I've said before, this kudzu, I've never seen any fruit on it. I've never seen, it's supposed to be part of the pea family. I've not seen any peas on kudzu. But I have seen the fruit of the Spirit exhibited in a child of God who's living according to the Holy Spirit that's within him. My prayer for each of us is that the peace of God which overtakes the kudzu weeds of fear and drives them out of our lives will so envelop us that others will see what God has planned for us and will want to live the victorious lives that he has for us through Christ Jesus. I hope that you can weed out those kudzu vines of fear and live a victorious life in Jesus Christ. He loves you and I love you and I want to pray with us right now and thank God for his power in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you that even in these tumultuous times, you're with us, you're guiding us, you're, you know our needs even before we speak them. But Father, right now we do pray that you will just continue to work in us. Father, don't let the weeds of fear take root in our lives, but let us live a life that shows your power living in us. Let us show your love to those around us. Help us, Father, to be filled with that peace. Help us to be filled with that joy. Help us, Father, to be filled with the, the understanding that you uh, love us and you want us to have that victorious life. Father, we just pray right now that you'll continue to lead and guide us, direct us according to your perfect plan. May you receive all the honor and glory in Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you.